So when you are starting your business, please don't rely on your friends to be your customers. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. Today, we are stepping back a little. I've shared with you in the past that I have had my share of both ups and downs. I've had my own business. I've been in a family business. I've had a corporate career. And one of the original intentions of this channel is not so much just the investments that we can do, the investment platforms that I usually review, and the strategies that I've shared with you. But overall, I really wanted to share my business experience with you because let's face it, not everyone is made out to be a corporate employee for the rest of their lives. In fact, I've also shared with you in the past that everyone is actually called to be in business at some point in their lives. I mean, unless you are a C-level executive with an extravagant retirement pay. Sooner or later, even if you do love your job, you're gonna have to be in business to sustain yourself, uh, especially in this country, just keeping it real. So I think that even if you think that you are not really a business person, you're gonna have to do it at some point in some capacity. So I think what better time to start than now? So today, what we'll cover are three main points in starting your own business. And don't worry, we are starting from the ground. If you don't know yet what business to put up, then this video is actually made for you. These are quite basic but I think they are essential and fundamental in getting your business started. So without further ado, let's get your business started. Let's go. So for our first point, we are in the ideation process of thinking about your business. So my main advice when thinking about what business to put up is that don't feel pressured that you have to be able to know what business you want to get into right away. One of the things about starting a business and understanding what business you want to get into is the whole process of opening your mind, understanding what's out there and what you can come up with yourself. Let me share with you an experience. When I used to be in corporate, I had this office mate that constantly wanted to get into business. And she would tell me, come on Mark, let's think about a business. Let's put our heads together. Let's meet later, let's talk about it. And I know this approach is not limited to my former office mate. I know there are a lot of people who think that they can brainstorm their way into a new business. I mean in the workplace, if your boss asks you for a new idea and you are asked to brainstorm, then most of the time you can actually try to put something together and eke out an idea or two. And that's fine, that works in the corporate world. Being able to put together an idea, a business that you may be profiting from. It doesn't really work that way that you can just force ideas from one another and be able to come up with an idea that you can actually live and earn from. So for me, the whole process of putting a business idea together, it's something that you would have to simmer to really think out and to sniff out opportunities. So just like any great idea, these could just come to you randomly, but you have to be presupposed to it. I mean, you've had to do a little bit of your homework as well, a little research, a little understanding of trends. I think one of the more proactive things that you can do when you want to start a business is that you can attend conferences, franchise shows. I mean, one of the available options anyway would be for you to go into franchising, and that would be a legit, incredible way of starting your own business as well. I find these conferences helpful because you're able to learn a thing or two even if you are just listening to a speaker or if you are just listening to another person make an inquiry. There are actually many things that you can pick up, especially if you are new to business. And just as a side note to this point number one, a lot of people that I've come across actually started their business as something that was circumstantial and this door was open to them because of being related to their previous job or perhaps it's something that has to do with their network or it has something to do with their hobby. So case in point, how I got started with Airbnb is that back in 2013, I was working for a bank and my main task, my main KPI was to come up with online promos where my bank's credit card could be used. So I did have partnerships with online shopping sites, apps, and one of the main partners that I approached and was successful in putting together was with Airbnb. So this was way before when Airbnb had the script and light blue logo. And I guess I got so amused about the whole concept of Airbnb and home sharing. I really put it in my mind that when the time comes that I have my own property, that this is something that I could also earn from. And pretty much that was the start of me getting into Airbnb. So again, the business that you might be putting up 
might be just around you. You might be one or two steps away from it. Of course, it's not gonna be as easy as it being handed to you. It's just a matter of you grabbing them, refining them, and starting them eventually. So let's move on to number two. One of the main misconceptions about starting a business is that a lot of people think that it ends with the product. Of course, your product has to be very good. It has to be unique, but a lot of people actually stop there. While your end product is definitely the main starting point for starting a business, your product by itself is not your entire business. Don't let your business idea be limited to just the product itself. Once you've decided on what your product should be and what would be its differentiating factor, you have to think about all the different aspects of the business so that you can think about scale even when you are still in the early stages. Start thinking about how you can grow the business, grow in your volume, because in our current world right now where the internet is just flooded with so many ideas, it's really a matter of execution. It's not enough for you to have a good product. Nothing is too unique anymore. It's really about your whole strategy. No matter how small your business would be, if it's just you running it, or if you are looking to employ one or two people at the start, you really have to be thinking about your strategy as a whole. So yes, your product is not your entire business, but it's how you put together your whole value proposition and really build your business around this. Let's move on to number three, and perhaps this is the most controversial of these three main points today. So when you are starting your business, please don't rely on your friends to be your customers. Am I just being bitter? Did a friend hurt me in some way? Aww. Definitely not. Uh, let me get around to my point. So let me bring you to 2020 or 2021. If you remember at this time, everyone was starting a business. Everyone was selling this, cooking this, selling this item and when you check now a lot of these businesses are no longer around some of it has to do with the circumstance of the pandemic but i think a lot of them didn't work out because a lot of these businesses relied on their friends as their main source of customers so for me personally i've always made it my rule that when i want to start a business it's not gonna be my friends that I'm gonna be relying on. I mean, first and foremost, I don't want to burden my friends. I don't want them to support my business just for the sake of. And a lot of your friends would actually support you if you did try. But I think you are creating a false sense of security, a false sense of your product being accepted because it was only your friend who accepted your product. When selling to friends, I don't think they will be the most brutal in terms of feedback. You will lose that very vital feedback of how you should be improving your product. Again, if it's food, then how could it taste better? I guess it's somehow a good place to start to get some initial feedback. But again, what good is that feedback if you're not really gonna be able to get the full truth of it? So if your business is not gonna be selling to your friends, to whom do you sell? Fair question. I think we've also seen now during the pandemic as well that it's so easy to actually put up your own Facebook page, your own Instagram page for your product. Sure, some friends will be the ones following you, but I think you should actually spend on ads, spend on some targeted ads that would really appeal to your target market. So when you are getting your business started, your goal should be to reach strangers. Whatever you're selling, maybe a product, an idea, a service, you should be reaching people that you've never known before. And once you know that you have pleased a complete stranger, then you have a legit product, you have a legit business for you to sell. So that's why I've always been a little cautious of catering to my friends because again, the feedback will not be 100%. Your goal should be getting to a point where your brand and product are known. Your friends actually congratulate you and say, hey, I didn't know you were behind this. I think when you get to that point, it's very fulfilling because if you are able to satisfy complete strangers, people that you don't know, know with the product that you've put together, then I think that that's a great sign that you are on the right track. So case in point, I've shared with you before that I consider this YouTube channel obviously as a business. I think one of the main mistakes that I did when I started this channel was that after I finished my video and published it, I would actually post this on my social media, my Instagram and Facebook. And while that used to be a good strategy for growing your YouTube channel, I think getting your friends to watch your video again gives you a false sense of fulfillment, a false sense of success. 
Of course, they would watch your videos, one, two, or three videos. But for you to really grow and scale in YouTube, it's really about reaching strangers. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. So even if you have a few hundred friends or even a thousand friends, your video going viral will really not be dependent on your friends. And here on YouTube, you get watched because either you are entertaining or that you are helpful. So I think that my pushing of my videos on my social media feed was actually more detrimental than useful. If I had not posted on my social media feed, I think YouTube would have found my natural audience much faster. So my point is, it really works the same way. The product that I'm offering, which is my YouTube channel, is not gonna be catering to my friends, but the whole range of strangers out there don't stick to the people that you know. Ah, so that's about it. Those are my three main tips. Just to recall, number one is giving your time and really predisposing your mind to come across the opportunities. Again, you can't force yourself to produce that idea right here, right now. Give your time to really simmer. You may be able to find it near based on your circumstances. Number two, think about your product, but also think about everything else that's part of the business. Your product is not your entire business. And number three, Please stop relying on your friends to be your main customers. You should be serving strangers. Your product should be satisfying those who don't know you. And once you are getting known and you are satisfying all these people that you would have never even known, then you know that you have a good product, you have a good business on hand. So where are you now in this process of putting your business together? If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy business hunting!